Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jose, the California beekeeper. Hey, we are going to share with you a commercial queen breeding operation here in Northern California, A and B's. So Sergi's gonna walk us through his whole operation. In addition to being a beekeeper, he's also an engineer. So his facility has a lot of custom designs from his automated feeding system, the breeding setup, the queen banks, the custom tie down system, the CNC engraver, uh, bee box joint innovation. This guy got some going on. So make sure you check out this whole video. You don't wanna miss a thing. If you're new to this channel, make sure you go down below, smash that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up on this video. Let's do it, guys. These are, this is how we uh, uh, breed the queens. So the, usually the queen will be in here and then um, we'll, we'll put a, fr uh, a new frame, empty frame in here. And then we trap the queen in here and she'll lay the eggs. And once we pull, make sure she's in there, she lays the eggs, we put her over here. We put a fresh uh, empty uh, frame in here close her up and then the one that was in here gets pulled out and that's where we graft from so it gets yeah it's two days in here two more days in here and then we graft nice. and then that's that's just about right so that's a nice nice setup um, the reason for people a lot of people ask us why this size it's comfortable like a full frame is very difficult to uh, graft from so yeah. these are just easier to handle that's the only reason so we just pick that size and so this just excluders us yeah that's our setup we have you know just a full frame so mm -hmm. you obviously yes. yes this is easier to maneuver yes it's easier to hunt for them because that's a lot like, yeah do. yeah that's that's pretty precise yeah it's a good good size so we graft about 12 to 1400 depends on the every day of the year yes yes every day uh we used to do seven days a week now we do a six uh we just don't graft for the a sunday because usually people don't take it on sundays excellent so, yeah. and these are all the breeders yeah so this will be so once we graft them into a frame these will be your starters okay. and then from the starters we pull them so we have finishers so oh these okay will be our finishers and so we actually pull them from there and we cut them that day we our incubator does not hold them nice so nice we try to use the hives as much as possible yeah they know what that temperature needs to be just right yeah I, I feel like the more I work with these like I grew up in this business and the, the more I learn um, the more we learn the less i feel like i know about them yeah you know what i mean so the yeah. closer we can get to nature the better it is for us so right now we're just using it for storage but usually yeah. it's all filled with hives and um, that's a lot all, of breeders you guys are going after it pretty tough in the yeah, springtime um, huh? yeah we kind of we fell into it by accident um one of uh queen raisers locally um he asked us if we sell um cells and yeah. um we said no we don't He's yeah like, but you guys make queens we yeah like, yeah we do but not for other people so he, yeah he asked us can you graft for me and so yeah that's, what it we, just that's, that's, that's how, how the beginning started. huh we started he was like can you make me you know 50 this week and so we're like okay we'll just increase our sure 50 and then it became can we do 100 120 every yeah. other day and then now you know now we sell more than half and it goes up and down like demand uh, a couple of years ago the demand was huge like we would get like you know orders of, like a thousand and then last year dropped off a little bit so who knows why but it's the queen business is a really tough business and yes. it's really easy i feel like to cheat in the queen business so um i know plenty of queen raisers that will pull their queens like after like 15 days if they have a demand for it yeah i mean it looks like a queen but did she yeah. lay eggs we wait until ours we have a sealed brood and a sealed brood pattern. yeah that's how long we wait yeah it costs us an extra almost two cycles per year it cost us you know over a yeah. hundred thousand dollars to do that but i feel like when you're buying our queen i at least know that in our hive she laid eggs yeah. she laid eggs and then there's a good brood pattern really bad brood pattern we throw out it's yeah. not worth it to us yeah to you just pinch that. them yeah it's not worth it to us to keep keep yeah. uh, selling on because you know that is the most important part of the whole hive and so yeah. when people come to us to trust us with that, that's a lot of faith. Do people seem to lean on the dark, Ger, Carnolian style? Um, we or sell the, only uh, Italians. We oh, used okay. to do both. 
uh, we can do both, but mostly just Italians. Italians? Yeah. And is that, you think, because of the almond pollination, people want population yeah, in their hives? population, because they'll start yeah. off sooner. And they'll start off sooner by, like, I think about two to three weeks sooner. Yeah. And then that gives you a huge advantage for the almonds. Yeah, definitely. So, That's so, where we get our paycheck. Yeah. Most uh, of it. Most yeah. of it, yes. For, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see this we'll year. We'll see how this... 2021 goes. Yeah, definitely. Through the pandemic, um, we felt as soon as it was like kind of announced, there was a, a slight drop off, and then it was kind of a lot lower than usual, and then it just spiked towards the end. We had over, I think, three to four thousand uh, queens. You were just, you know, getting ready, and then all of a sudden, like within two weeks, we were sold out. Through around the August, September time, yeah. yeah. It was just, you know couple of big guys called and then we had like 20 or 30 small guys call about 100 150 you know yeah. they want, want, and it they goes fast you know yeah. you think you have 2000 seems like a lot and then all of a sudden you get a couple of calls and it's gone yeah yeah that's... especially with die offs and you know you want to always put extras in so yeah yeah for sure mm -hmm. second edition he says right here yeah He's... so basically there's a uh, there's a float in here a float valve that sits in here it's a small barrel Okay. covered up yeah and then this gets just filled with gravity but up to about here and then inside there's like a mosquito netting inside okay so that the bees don't fall in and then that just stays with syrup and so the pump turns on by time right now and it'll turn on and the bees walk inside eat and they come back out so it's basically like inside feeder but it's just sitting on the outside and the great thing is about even if it's leaking right here sometimes we have leaks if it's leaking out here, the entrance is so far away that they don't rob these hives. Got it. And then they're just basically it's open feeding for the rest of the bees. And then we'll come in and fix it and they just go away. I like every, I like the whole setup. I mean, just the, the height, even just the height. I mean, there's no reason to be bend, bending over. Yes. <laughs> it's just something so simple. Yes. Yes. There's no reason to bend over. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, same thing with like these. These were just, we figured out how much, because we have a bottom regular 10 framer yeah There's 10 framers on this because it's just the and then same thing that's actually it right there so regularly it'd be a 10 frame on the bottom so we'll just say this is a 10 framer yeah so it's like that and then one and then we just just divided 10 framer into half that way we can just put our what we graft into our grafting and then we have one frame of open brood, one frame of open brood, and then closed brood. Yeah. And then we pull it from the bottom from what that queen is laying. So uh, we have an excluder on over here. And the reason we divided it is so, because you have to work with these, you know, every day. Yeah. We have four groups, but you're working with them every day. So it's just easier to lift up, put it over here, find the brood you need, put it into here, put the excluder back on. And yeah. It on. Yeah. How just a lot more manageable. Yeah, it's the little things. It's usually never yeah. in, in business world. I found it's never like one big giant idea that helps you. It's the little things. It's the keeping it just one day at a time. Just make it a little bit better. Make it a little bit cleaner. You know. Yeah. yeah. Figure out you know how to just make that just a little bit easier. Because when you're going bigger or you have less people, that time is very valuable. That effort. We have to make sure everything's manageable. Like our handles. We made our handles. So instead of the slits, yeah. So because when we started off, uh, it was just my family. So it's my, my dad and I. My dad has a bad back, can't lift heavy things. So it was basically my mom and sister that would lift. And so for them to use those slits, it was very hard on their fingers. Yes. So yeah, this is just a box that we bought a truck from, and we took that off. And you know, we didn't want to sell it for five hundred dollars, so we just converted it to this. It's an incubator, then, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. We bought one originally, and then it broke, and so I ripped it all out, and I put my own electronics on it. So it has temperature, that's the inside temperature right now, and then the, that's the target temperature that will go to. So it'll heat and cool. So this is what we graft into. We used to make wax ones, and then it was just too much. Like yeah. when we were grafting 12 to 1400 a day, we just ran out we couldn't do it we needed a system so we bought these uh, the jay-z ones a lot of people are popular most people put them in the slot 
And then what we found to take them out, the most popular method is just take a knife and then just pop them out. Yeah. But the problem is with that is that they're the most vulnerable at that time. So they'll actually fly out. And if they fly, they can hurt their wings doing that. They won't get developed wings. Yeah. So uh, we've pre-drilled these to the right slot. And so we just put it on, on this guy. And now with a press, we can easily push this out very, very slowly. That's pretty cool. Excellent. Yeah. So, and now we also put we put a light in here. Yeah, so, there you go. So you can see, you can actually see which ones are dead mm. or something that's wrong with them. So you can evaluate them right here. And so, and then you can collect them. And then go to the next one. Impressive. So, I like it. Yeah. That's very neat. You custom made this yeah, unit just, here? Yeah, I just machined this out. This is just a C channel. Very cool. And these are these are all made on CNC, so these are all precise. So I don't remember. I think it's 0.8 of an inch apart. I wanted to get as much as I can in here. That's why there's only that's why there's 17. It's a weird number, yeah. but that's how much fit in there. Perfect. And these are our frames for where they. That's where we we'll put our into our finishers, into our breeders. So they'll be like that. It depends the time of the year. We either run two bars, one bar, or three bars. So. Yeah, I like the height. Yeah. The levels mm -hmm. there. Yeah, this is probably version like five or six. So it just takes time to get it just right. Yeah. Um, same thing with this building. You know, like we we lay them out right here when we go pull them. So they'll take they'll they'll come out. They'll take them out. And they'll put them into here, and then even here you can start evaluating them. Total yeah, quality just, control. Yeah. To yeah. make sure that they're not dead and make sure there's make sure it's not an empty one. You know, there's stuff happens to them all the time. So yeah. make sure it's just right. Nice. So yeah. And usually we just they sit down, they evaluate them. So there's usually two stations that they're grafting. Two this is their station. So they put that little frame on here. It's just the right angle. You know, this is probably on version six of it, like what the tilt is, yeah. like what's most convenient. And then they'll have a light in here and they'll graft. Nice. And this kind of stuff is just so it's out of the way. So once they're done, they can pick this up and they can wipe all this down. So it's nice and clean. Day. Like this should be as close to a lab as possible for us. Obviously we'll take these guys when we want to scrape them off after we're done, because they'll be wax on here. We'll put a, uh, a uh, big garbage can underneath, we just roll it under there and then we'll just scrape them off right in the center. And Perfect. And just wipe everything in here. Just, just, just the, little, the little things. It's the little things. It's just to make it easy, make it fast, you know, here. Make it clean. <laughs> yeah. Um, same thing. So I put a, I adapted my heating system to them. So, so these are queen banks that we put in here. Nice. You know, um, there was an apiary over in I think Glenn, mm -hmm. um, down the street from Conan's, and they had a, an office similar to this, mm -hmm. and they had all their banks mm -hmm. just like this with the mm -hmm. exits. And I was thinking, wow, that's that's, that's mm -hmm. very nice because it's it's much cheaper to heat a room or insulate a room than to you know try yeah. to heat or cool all the hives because they're they need a lot of help. Yeah. So. And like we, we put a lot of ventilation on here, so these are special ventilated. Oh, nice. So we put them on top. That way they can heat or cool. Perfect. As we do with getting overflow. Sometimes, you know, we'll have anywhere between a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand extra queens, you know, in the bank because we pull them out and then the customer wants, like, I need one more week because we have a thunderstorm coming in. So, yeah. So yeah, we're going sure. to our grafting yard. Oh, okay. So we're going to put them, we're hoping to have like a W shape in here. So maybe like six containers. And then we're going to basically like the grafting room. We're yeah. going to have it for the actual hives themselves. So Got it. Instead of under a tent, it's going to be inside the building. So. Wow. So. Nice. It's going to be a lot of work, um, but hopefully we're worth it. Your, on your hives, what are you seeing in the winters um, as far as this year in particular? Have you had trouble, um, loss? We've had some losses that were sprayed early earlier in the year, like the yards that we know got sprayed by the farmers. 
but besides that um, I think it's about average so this is the large noose that we run we don't run small ones right now but yeah. the same thing it has a feeding system on the outside and then three colonies it's just basically a 10 framer that was divided into three like the queen castle yeah that people yeah. seen we used to put nets on here and year after year the nets was you know you'd break them out and um you can't use plastic ones because they just fall apart so we had to use aluminum and then when you start pulling aluminum ones they they leave sh uh, shards out and you wouldn't believe how many times we've stabbed ourselves with them yeah so i took i found plugs and then i just drilled holes in them so that we just all we have to do is just pop these guys out then to release the queen the bees because we yeah right it just it just made <laughs> it was one of those small small little things that it was just huge this is our indicator for uh, we need to get nice oh really when you yeah. start yeah like i said we try to do what the bees want so when we drive by here one day there'll be like a couple hundred bees next day you can come in and this will just be black you'll just be bees will be going in and out covering we yeah. do patties people always ask me when do you do patties i'm like i don't know i look at them yeah let me let me go outside yeah yeah drive by them it's great man what do you use ultra uh b pro b pro yeah so these are actually going to be our january clears so we still keep them in the nukes and ironically, these will be our strongest hives. So we will convert them back into hives to take the pollination. Just... These will be the strongest, yeah, because they're being fed all the time and they're just on stable, on automated stable feeding all the time, so. You ever have a, a problem with op overpopulation in some of them? Yeah. Around this time? Yeah, but like I said, they'll, they'll be- They'll figure best. it out, right? Yeah, they'll be our best hives. They always yeah. are. So that's the, actual, that's the actual float in the center. So I'll show you later what it actually yeah. looks like inside. Okay. But um, yeah, there's um, there's basically a float inside that just puts the level on here. So you have some variation that you can do. So and this will supply four of them. It's nice. not ideal, but it's what I could come up with. This is my second version of it. So working on version three right now. So well, hopefully it'll be better. Nice. We still kept the so you can see them from the top. So because if the system fails for whatever reason, you can come in here and, and bottle feed them. Handle but you can imagine this could put bottles on all of you because we have one, two, three, four, five, six yards right now that are being fed through not not that not that tote but the tote behind that. And that's all on solar on energy. Solar. Yeah. Nice. Cold Man, you just saved a lot of time. Oh yes. Wow. Huge. Yeah, you can imagine if you, like, you know, you come out to your yard and I told you, oh, well, you got to go feed those. And you're, you're thinking, well, that's not that bad. Well, yeah, but you know, you have to go, uh, you had to go fill them. You had to create them. You had to transport them. You had to flip them all over. And then when it's done in a couple days, you have to go pick them all back up again. It's an exponential, like the amount of work that that takes. Just two by fours. Haul it off with the forklift. Boom. Yeah. Perfect. Well, they're not going to carry it. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You can see our shop. Oh, this is that one that you guys were working on. Got it. Yeah. So. So is there an awning on the other side or what what is those so we stopped at the corner but the problem is the water runs in and then the water runs inside so we made basically an awning to go on the outside and then all That's... i did was weld some custom brackets over there so we just like, clamped two by fours to it and then we just put a little roof on it to contact them directly yeah. we planted everything here when we came here there was nothing here it was into the clock. So yes. and we tried to divide them into like kind of like uh, logical sections. So this is more like equipment wise, and then uh, because we have our grafting right there, and when those trees are blooming, they actually fly up, and then they they cause the bees to go up, and then they fly over. Mm. 
So, because if, if you if you have an inchy field, the bees will fly as low as they can. Okay. If you put a barrier in front of them, they'll actually fly up up to, up, up to that height, and they'll just keep going at that same height. Nice. What kind of trees are these? Um, these are some kind of fruit bearing trees that bees like. There are different varieties. Our orchard is a pecan orchard, and that's only due to we get floods here because we're right next to the levee, so we get a lot of seepage, and sometimes every like five years or so we'll get six inches eight inches of water in here so they won't anything else won't survive almonds will die any other trees they die uh, we had a pistachio there's a pistachio orchard where the neighbors have and they have really poor crop and actually like they sold it off because they get flooded and they die um, our trailers are just random trailers that we got um, the only thing we've had to rebuild on them is pretty much everything so I don't, I'm not sure why I don't make my own trailers yet because I've rebuilt them completely. They run all our wiring and tubing because when we take them to the orchard, so all our wiring is inside and that Spare tire wise, I've seen a lot of beekeepers and a lot of people that make stuff for beekeepers that are not beekeepers. They put a lot of like, especially like spare tire, which is a dead giveaway when a non-beekeeper puts their stuff on, is they put it on that side. I don't know why, if you're on the side of the road, you are you have a 50-50 chance of blowing out either the left side or the right side. But you have to take the spare tire off, you're going to be on the side of the road whether you're going to be on a traffic or non-traffic side. Yeah. I'd rather be on non-traffic side. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get hit. So this is kind of version two. This is not lined up because this was made for, originally this was made for wood. But um, we started using aluminum because we leave our trucks out in California and they the wood just gets eaten away. Like you can see on, my, on this one. This is this is not rotted away. This sun this is sunburnt. It gets so sunburnt that it just starts it just dries it out. Yeah. So we replace these about every three to four years. It's crazy. So I use start to use aluminum. Aluminum, yeah. But yeah, this yeah. is our this is our tie down system. So for our complete loads, we have the four inch belts that we run just from the hook. Yeah. All the way to the back and then the ratchets in the back tying down. For anything that's less, um, if you use this, then obviously it doesn't give enough support. Um, so we use these these ratchets, and that's how we use ratchets, self roll up ratchets, which are fantastic. Oh yeah. So yeah. they are expensive, but well worth it because you you just put it on, you forget it. Like there's no, you it's almost you almost can't screw it up. So and then the small stuff. That's. Great, right there. Step. That's awesome. <laughs> Make it easy on yourself. That's pretty slick if you just need to get up there to fix something. Yeah. Well, when well, you have to tie it down, so. Yeah. You just throw your belt on here. You get your net, you throw the net up here. It's taking up a lot of room, so we have to move our toolboxes around. So I have to. I really don't want to put two boxes back here because they'll get hit. Okay. But I don't have much of a choice. Oh, like in the departure angle, yeah. Because yeah. well, as soon as you go off of a, into a bump or into a hole, this will yes. start dragging it. So, but I need more boxes. So I overbuild my hitches. The custom made. Oh, that's beefy. Look at that. Wow. That's a what, three inch. Huh? Three inch? I think that's a four. Yeah, it's a four inch. Yeah. A quarter inch thick. Well, I look at it this way. Um, with hitches, uh, you really want it to be as strong as possible. You want it to handle 50,000 pounds, especially for a beekeeper. What's going to happen to a beekeeper? Like your trailer is going to be much lower anyway, no matter yeah. even if you make it yourself or not. So if you go off road and you get it stuck, what do you, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to hit the gas, right? Yeah. Now let's let's imagine worst case scenario. You rip this hitch out, and you you can't unload your forklift because your trailer's dumped over forward. You don't have a you don't have your forklift on the truck, your truck is most likely going to be fully loaded. Now you got you can't unload your truck because your forklift's on in the orchard, and you're going to be in the orchard where there's no cell service. So <laughs> I overbuild these for, for 
purpose. So yeah, this is all custom. This is everything's custom. Yeah, I, nice. I buy the I buy a just chassis. So my new design, um, I turn these. So these are usually backup lights. So I use them as side markers. Inside, I'll have I can turn them onto high beams. And on my regular trucks right now, they're just putting light out this way. But the problem with that, we found out, is it's great for when you're loading and unloading trucks, but it's blinding the, the operator. Yeah. So I decided to angle these, first of all, so I don't hit them with the forklift. And second of all, so I can shine light down. These are already pre-wired here. Why not use them? Nice. So it gives you extra lights. And then I wire them so that we actually... It tells the truck that the brake is on, you know, quote unquote. So these lights, because I have four lights in the back, yeah, that they'll turn on the brightness and they're LEDs, so they're super bright. They're like bright. You, you don't have to have a flashlight around here at all. So it'll be like like shelving. And I figure because we use the nets, uh, we can take the net because it has to go on top. So we can take the net out and put it on top, and then when you walk from the other side, you can throw it on here. So it'll be like a little shelf. Start hanging bee suits, <laughs> iron them up. <laughs> yeah, that would be something. And then you have one more step. Nice big steps are going to be reflected. Oh, yeah. The big, biggest, best steps. It's an 08. 08. You can fit three people in here if you want. Very comfortably. Yeah. The cab um, is big. For the turn radius on this thing, it's amazing. Like, there's no, you can't turn tighter than that. Like, this thing, wheel spacings between here, this is smaller than my pickup, my GMC 1500. And so your your turn wheel radius is depending on how much how much you can turn your wheels and how far your wheels are apart. It has air suspension, suspension seat, has cruise control. It has automatic uh, windows, it has automatic doors, automatic mirrors, it defog, um, fog mirrors, um, it has storage on top. It's pretty smooth. They have progressive springs, okay. so Japanese like to use progressive springs. American uh, manufacturers usually just use constant springs, uh, but these are pretty smooth. It's a huge mess. Right? Um, because I'm a poor beekeeper, I couldn't afford a hundred thousand dollar CNC machine, so I bought one for eight, and then I probably spent another ten covering it. So this was completely open. I can probably show you some pictures of it before. Yeah. That were, this was completely open, but since you spray coolant on there, and this just gets everywhere. So I, I made we made this complete enclosure for it. There's very little left of it originally. I slightly modified this, by slightly I mean a lot. I can put coolant into any nozzle, from any nozzle. Um, I got filters. This is the only original cabinet. Everything else on the side of it is completely custom. This whole box right here, this is my controller, which is not finished yet. Yeah, this is all from scratch. Well, because I wanted to have more access, I'm, I'm doing a lot of like engraving and stuff like that, which yeah. the router should be doing, but I'm doing it. So I need to control the vacuum. I need to control spindles. So, and this thing only has like three or four input or outputs, but they're not the correct kind of outputs. They, you can only see on or off. So this one can control a lot more than that. So this guy is talking to that guy very dumbly, and then I can control everything else. I can control a vacuum individually. I can like literally plug in a vacuum in here and then have a vacuum piped in from the top and then it'll just suck out the dust if I need to. This is the control, the just control center, yeah. Um, I'm not going to turn on the CNC, but yeah. this is the CNC part, and this is actually my, my PLC right there, which, is, which should be talking to this guy. And what do you? how do you get your um, design? You... I design it myself, so I use a program on a computer to design it from scratch. And you just, what, hook it up, upload it, or...? Yeah, it's just a USB. So G-codes are basically uh, what they call Go moves. So a G1 would be uh, go from wherever you are and then you tell it to like go to x1 so if it's at zero it would go go to two, one inch and then you tell it how fast you go and that's all it is and so what it does is what it does is it would just move this table underneath it and then you can make anything you want out of it so 
the head moves up and down by itself, and then the table moves in two axes. So you have a three axis. And so you can make anything pretty much you see. What is this one here? Um, it... Well, I can actually put coolant or air out of any nozzle okay. I want. Um, that one's just, this is called a lock line, so you can actually make it as long or as short as you want. So each one will clip into another one, and there's a bunch of different nozzles. So usually I use these for uh, blowing air. So when I'm engraving, I can blow out air on it, or I can uh, have a vacuum. So I have a vacuum attachment from here. Uh -huh. So they'll be, come out here and it'll, it'll sit here and it'll, it'll try to suck up all the dust from engraving nice. or something. And then I can blow air out of it so I can clean it or can take a look at it. It's just options. Everything's individually controlled. So I can have boot number one running, two, three, four, number five, it doesn't matter. Or I can blow out air in the other. So on that system that we, we talked about outside, inside is just a mosquito netting you that you would use for the house. That's so the bees can walk up and For down. the feeding system. Yeah. This is for the feeding yep. system. Yeah. So on the inside, this would sit like this so the bees can positively walk in and out because they're, they're jerks to each other. They'll push each other in and then yeah. they'll, uh, they have a hard time climbing back out. So we put those guys in there. So on the inside, this is, usually this is covered up and that's from like tiny little ants, which I found out yeah. are everywhere. As soon as you put anything sweet out there, this is what happens. So on the inside, there's a float valve. And this is just a three inch PVC that I got cut down, this got cut out, and then on the bottom, these are just push to connect connectors. So the only thing that we have to do when we come out there is we put them in those holders, and then these are just push to connect, and that's it, it's connected. And if we need to remove it, you push this back down and you, it's out. Like this, how to connect all three together. So oh yeah. About this kind of stainless. There's a lot of welding. There's a lot of problems they can go with that. That's another one, so they can just stick inside. Yeah. So if you can hand me that tube right there. So this tube would would be able to stick in there, and then you could just screw it to the side right there, and then you could take it all out, blow everything out. Usually, cleaning is more bigger problem than actually feeding them. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm gonna keep going with that or just move to my uh, newer. Uh, yeah, I remember the eight frame um, design. So this has this is one of the. I think there's only two prototypes right now. Um, this is gonna be an eight chamber nuke. So this is the feeder itself. This looks good in the middle, like that. The bees. This perfectly lines up with these guys right here. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is like this, perfectly lines up like that. And then these go inside like that. And this is, this is the only thing that bees have access to. So this gets filled with syrup. And then this gets covered up like that. So each one has one. And they're all magnet, they all have magnets on them. So, and the magnets sit in here. There's actually a magnet right here. And then... Oh, nice. And then there's a magnet in these guys. And so they just get self-aligned like that. And that's it. So all you have to do is just bring it close enough and then it'll just magnet into space, into its position. So for winter time, when you take everything out, you take them all out. And then for summertime or springtime, you just go ahead and just drop them, get them close enough and then it'll self-align with it. Piece of metal. Yep. Oh, man, you can't go wrong with that. Wow, that's a piece of stainless. Yeah. So, um, I, I ran into a lot of problems with this. Um, this is the most optimal for space, for how much this costs, for how much I can push out with these. So you can see that these are actually really tall frames, and this is the full full height of a frame. So you, you can take one foundation, divide it into four, and you have one. I like the depth. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, yes. I want to keep them longer, taller. So, um, and then I'm going to have one entrance here and one entrance here, so you have ventilation as much as possible. This thing had 
couple problems. So because this board is so long, it's starting to warp. So I've been thinking it for a while, and so what I'm decided to do is I'm gonna go with a dovetail system like this. So it's mechanically being held inside. Yeah, I can't pull that. It can't pull. Yeah, because no matter how, what kind of you put a screw in here, a staple, it's gonna pull that out. That wood will shrink, and it'll just pull it out. A dovetail, once you put that in there, you don't even need to glue it. You don't need to do anything. It'll just keep it there. Yeah. Um, then the second problem I had was I needed to get this piece of stainless in here. The reason I want to use stainless is because uh, anything that then when we scrape it, everything gets destroyed. And if you destroy this barrier right here, um, you will have uh, this will become one nuke because they'll kill the other queen and then they'll just be sharing queens. Yeah. So that needs to be that needs to be put in port. Um, then the other problem was the stainless steel that I want to use because I'm cheap, um, I had to cut this out and then put another piece in here of wood. Hmm. So this has to be in two. Uh, I couldn't find a slitting saw that would, or a saw that could cut that. So I decided to use a actual slitting saw from machining to actually be able to cut that. And I realized that if I can do it from the side, I can actually get rid of this because this right here, this is waste of space right here yeah in fact it's even more than that this is wasted space all of this so this is all going to get either filled in with a bunch of junk there's going to be some kind of critter living in there or the bees are going to uh, put propolis in here on this you can see that this is much stronger design and that if you can think of it from the side point like that there's no wasted space now yeah in that corner yeah and it's easier to clean and it's much stronger on this joint for to hide because it's not a big deal you can make one of anything but one, once you start making let's say you want to make 10,000 of these that gets really expensive really yes. quickly and especially if they start going bad square the tail mm -hmm. then I moved on a little bit I, I, since I already went down this rabbit hole I wanted to keep going I wanted to uh, address this issue of open pores to the outside. So for a lot of beekeepers, they use those joints, you know, the interlocking joints mm -hmm. that they use. So the problem with those interlocking joints is that there's a lot of open grain on them. And people try to paint them, people try to uh, soak them and everything, but it absorbs it, everything and takes it inside. So your ideal um, is to hide this as much as possible. Um, the interlock actually came from cabinets. So when you need to put hundreds of pounds into a small cabinet in your drawer in order to pull it out, uh, so you can hold that. We don't have that kind of stress on the hive itself. Yeah. Uh, people say like, oh, it's much stronger. It is stronger, but that's not our biggest problem. Our biggest problem is that this rots. Rots, yeah. Yeah, so we need to hide the grain. So I started looking into what kind of, what can I do for, what kind of joints I could do. So I came up with, came out with this joint. So they, they make these, these are, I don't remember exactly what this joint is called, but see this hides the grain completely. Got it, yeah. So there's no open grain. And if you do the math actually, between, if you were to just cut this at a 45 right here, and this one, this one has twice as much surface area. So if you glue this and then you staple it, because the staples are only there to hold while the glue dries. Yes. Mostly it's going to be your glue. So this has twice the surface area of what it, if it was of just the straight. Yep. And this will make a 90. If you make this correctly in a fixture, like when you're talking about cutting, you can assemble this in the open and it'll be a 90. Yeah. You don't need a fixture to hold that at 90. So do you ever winterize these? Like, do you put them on top of the other so, hives? Yeah. Um, what, what is your biggest problem with running a small nukes? What do you do with the frames, right? Yeah, what do you do with them? Yeah, so, yeah. come on. Now, I'm thinking, because I'm cheap, what do I do with those, what do I do with those uh, frames? I need to work for them. So, this is my answer to that. So this is gonna be my storage. So I can see, you can see I already ran them a couple times. So, so That's all, excellent. All, all this is, is my A-framer divided in half. From that, I took, I, div, I made this and I got my uh, 
frame size. Mm -hmm. From this frame size, I made the nuke. What does this give me? This gives me a storage place for my nukes. As you can see, my, my A-framer is a mirror image. So I have an outlet out here and I have an out on the other side. If I put a piece of burlap on top, that will, now this will be an overwinter nuke for two queens. That will keep my frames alive. They'll keep them, you know, supplied with everything they need. Now I can pull these queens out and then put this on a single and this can this is a regular size a framer basically that's just made for these and then I can put this on a regular single and then now that's a double story that I can take to on the pollination yes yeah and I can split this and I can split this and then I can take these out and put them in my nukes and they're ready to go they're already yeah so what I like about this is that the size I mm -hmm. like the size because I know a lot of guys they do transfers on eight frame style yes. box as well but it's a they're full frames like this yes because they run a lot of the yeah. two, two, two-sided two nukes. Yeah. But those two-sided nukes, what do you do with those two-sided nuke bodies? Yeah. It makes sense to keep everything the same body. Yes, yes. Yeah, because in, 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 for the beekeepers, there's two problems. You either don't have enough equipment or you have way, or you have way too much equipment that yeah. you don't know what to do with. Yeah. So if everything's, if you can make it everything the same-ish, then it should be good. Usually for this kind of stuff, it's, uh, you need much more strength so we actually glue it completely and then we put a staple and we run about a two and a half inch staple so it'll come out to here and then we bend it over that way it's a hook yeah same thing with this guy these you guys usually fall off this is an okay idea but it could be better but not making it much more complicated so this is a huge nail this is about a three inch nail you rise there's a washer in here and then a, a nail so the nail gets put through here and then it goes all the way on top, we bend it, and then we hammer it down. The reason we put a washer on here, because metal on metal slips very, very easily, and then it won't pull out. It won't rub through the, um, the wood. If you have hundreds of thousands of these and they start all getting wax moth, you're in, you're in big trouble. Yeah. It's, almost, it's almost, at that point, you almost might as well just throw them all out and just start with new ones. Yeah. Or even washing them. Can you imagine washing all those? <laughs> Every single one of them, you can see there's quite a few. All these got engraved on my CNC mill. That's pretty crisp. That is definitely crisp. It seems so obvious now, as I put them together like the IT furniture does. I drill holes precisely on a CNC mill, and then I just assemble it with dowel pins. Goes like that. So you can see nice. dowel pins on the side, yeah. dowel pins over here. So everything gets connected. This is all square. This is everything. You, the dowel pins won't let you put it any other way. This is our pallet for that, for that guy. So, Don't tell me they lock too. Locked in place. Of course they lock in place. So look at that. <laughs> so the only way they can go here is sideways. But once you put them on our truck, our tie down system goes this way. Now, my, my boxes before that, they didn't have the center piece and what they had to do, they had to get two by fours to put on top so they, they don't break my box. But what happens is like anything, you come out to the field, oh, we still have boxes here. Did you bring the two by fours? No, we did not. Okay, tie it down. So they break this. So now the, two, the tie down system will actually go through here. So I don't need anything. So, Cause I want to make this once and I want to make this. Yeah last as long as possible um these <laughs> these pallets are also made with dowel pins you would think that's a waste of time because you can make pallets pretty quickly well yes but the the space the spacing has to be pretty spot on um also i decided to use dowel pins because um when they're on the trucks that's usually because we don't take the forklifts when we're feeding yeah there's really not no need for it uh the guys walk on these and so I, I can use cheaper wood. They will have sometimes knots, the big knots in here. They will actually break these. So what I can do, and I made these with screws, so I can unscrew that, get another one, put new dowel pins, and then just put it into place. I don't have to realign it. They can do it out in the field if they really wanted to. These this are, is one of the ones that you were talking about as far as... Yeah, yeah you don't want to get that light screw, believe me. Because in the summertime, the, this table, this metal table right here, yeah. you can't touch it. It'll be so hot. 
And because we don't have concrete, I put things on jacks so I can level everything out. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, that's creative. Um, this is one of our saws too. And because we don't have level floors, I made everything else up from the base. So everything's being relative to the saw itself. Yes. So these, if you believe it or not, these, this side of the table is not actually attached to this physically. It's attached to these. So everything can be straightened because I'm shooting for plus or minus a 30 seconds. I can cut within right now with my stop. I'm plus or minus two to three thousand. And as my, as my friend said that, um, they did cabinets for a long time, that three or four thousandths in wood, that's walking across the shop. That's how much it varies. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, usually you put a couple of honey frames right here. Yep, and they're just ventilator all the way around. This one needs a little loving. Um, a lot of guys make them way bigger. Oh, uh -huh. don't do that for your own sake. Because this is already, um, this thing is about 10, 10 to 15 pounds empty. And when you put 20 to 30 pounds of bees, that's awkward to handle. And any more than that, the bees get way too hot and they'll die. Yeah. Um, I know, I know beekeepers that have like double size of this and they'll try to put 30, anywhere above 30 pounds. If it's too hot, they'll die. You have to spray them with water all the time. It's just not yeah. worth it. And this is what I was telling you about. Like, see how much open grain there is? Yeah. And you can see it's already swelled quite a bit yeah just from being out i mean it's not painted or anything but we just bought a couple of these and we didn't like it and these are eight framers and all eight framers they're different sizes like this eight framer will take nine plastic frames but only eight wood frames so you have to decide what you mm. want it's, uh, locally or is man lake or it's probably what? man lake oh. i don't know i think yeah. we only have two of those Oh. I didn't really like them. This is a regular pallet a framer. Concrete nails. Oh, pretty beefy. Yeah. This just kind of holds holds it in pretty good, or what? Yeah. what? This this holds the actual box. So this is this gives you the alignment. Okay. Uh, yeah. You see, this is bigger. See, this is already bigger than ours. Yeah. Ours is thirteen inches exactly. So it would hold like that. Good. Uh, you nice. don't need much more than that. I actually like. Well, I like that idea rather than getting the U clips because the, the U, -clips U clips are so yeah. expensive. Or, yeah, W clips. I mean. Yeah, um, there's you know there's as many clips as there are beekeepers. So uh, these are cheap. Um, you can hardly bend them because they're concrete nails. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And another problem is that when you're transporting them, uh, when they're built right, like these. These right here transfer the weight right on top of these, so they they don't do this whole like when you oh, back ten high. Yeah. yeah, these I think are ready to be fixed. These are a broken ones, so they're watered away and everything. But when they're right, so these are these are like one of our first variations. We need a big one right here. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that you only have that since the nails right here, you only have about an inch of how accurate you can be before it starts tumbling on it because it falls off. Yeah. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what we did with that is we cut that in half and we moved it over to the center of this when they're lined up like this. That Got way it. when you're transporting them, it's much more stable. Yes. And it gives place for the dirt to fall out. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, luckily we don't have that issue oh, during, much, during, but in the orchard, the almond, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get it yeah, a lot. But I don't know about you, but when we, when we pick up our hives, uh, we push it with the forklift first to break that suction, mm -hmm. and then we pick it up so that way there's not big clumps on the bottom. Yeah, that's a good tip. I'm, no, I don't do that. I do it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> because these these either don't see or don't react to red light, so we just we put red lights all over everything. It's daylight basically. We have some white lights too. Um, if we need them, but I mean it's very rare. Pretty the LEDs do the job. Oh, the yeah. red ones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all the way around. All the way around, yeah. A mini light bar in the back. Yep. So this is uh, different. I've... Push your fan? 
Yeah, I mean, what? It... I was it was having a problem with cooling, so I added a pusher fan on it. Mm. Actually, it's a suction fan right there. But... So these originally we bought metal cans, so okay. we had four metal cans, and then we we decided to go to these because they're much cheaper and we could just put two if we really needed to. Yeah. So you can see, like when we tie them down, it started to break. The... Yeah, and this is the new one. Yeah, and so this is the new one, and it has eight. It's a, it's a slip fit. You see? That? Yeah. So it has to be very, very precise for that. And you can see that, like this, this right here. Even if you put a lot of force down, this transfers the weight here, transfers the weight here, transfers the weight here, and then it just keeps going down. So you can just tie it down pretty much as much as hard as you want. Yeah. Slick. So we get a truckload, it dumps it all in there, and yeah. the big one. Um, and then we put it in this guy, and I mix it 50-50. So I okay. use high fructose 55. I, mix, I add about half with water, and then the rest I pump in the syrup. And then I just use my pump to mix it. And my pump has a nice little doggy house. Yeah, I and mean, you gotta keep it nice. Yeah. Literally a dog house though. <laughs> yeah. Cause I can't I can't buy the metal for that cheap. It's like thirty bucks on Amazon and there's nothing I didn't do anything to it. I just put it inside wow. and yeah. put it on top. So. What is that unit there? You also add it for um... So I I put Clorox in there. Or okay. Chlorine. Yeah. So that's to mix it. So I used to climb on top and I don't like heights, so it's a suction system, so you just basically, while it's, I'm pouring water in there, I can just add whatever I need to add to it. Yeah. How fast can you fill a tote? Um, that's three, that pump can pump 300 gallons a minute, so a little over a minute, so it's what? It's 200, well, it's right, right about one minute for a tote, but nice. my setup is usually four totes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So, five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a filling station. Uh, so we have a small pump that pumps it, and then it's just on a timer, and then you push the button, fills it. Excellent. So, I think I've only seen one of these setups just one other time at the the Wootens up north. Hmm. They have a little six station yeah, Strachan, thing. Yeah, Strachan has one that's for six. It's gravity fed. Um, I don't like gravity wise because it's inconsistent. Uh, I'd rather use pumps and something low. If you put anything on a stand, um, that's a lot of weight to go wrong. Anything to settle. I can't remember how to turn this on. I mean, I built it, but I don't use it. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, this pump right here is just this uh, centrifuge, centrifuge pump. So, it picks it up from the bottom, it strains it, so in case we get like a dead bee in there or something. And then most of the time it recirculates back into it and drops it on top, so that keeps it mixing. Yeah. And then the other one will actually send it to the valve. So it's already programmed yeah. to what it needs to. Yeah, so my guys figured it out, that's, that's how much it needs for that. So it's pretty easy, it's pretty, I am working on it because we have the eight one, so our next next variation will fill eight at a time. But I really want to not just be able to fill; I want to be able to clean them, wash them, and fill it at the same time. So, yeah, I made this. This is my first version of this. It was just inside of a UPS box. It was just a regular timer with this valve, so it just opens for that amount of time, and it's all off-the-shelf parts. Cool. So we make, yeah, we make our own patties. And it depends on the year, on the time of the year how soft we make it. Yeah. So it's pliable. Oh nice. Okay. That's a perfect cutting size yeah. right there. Yeah. We just cut it up and to put it in there. Nice. The dog likes the patties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we just mix it, we're cheap, so we mix it in the barrel. Uh, yeah, I know these things work great. Those uh, concrete plaster mixers. Yeah. Doesn't matter in plaster mixer. This is just a regular mixer. It doesn't have paddles. Oh, just just turn it around. around yeah. <laughs> so we buy our B Pro and the big totes. Yeah. 
and then we just put them into smaller containers so that way they don't oh, this is empty so we set them to oh, i don't know i think like 21 pounds or something like that okay um the reason we do that first of all we diversify it so if something gets wet or anything it doesn't ruin the whole batch it's easier to carry uh, it's half our load for our recipe for our uh, bread mix and then this is just the right weight to go put it into one of the barrels for the feeder so that will function you can take one of these or yeah whatever you need recipe, yeah. nice yeah. this is our hopefully our gonna be our next mixer so a cutter yeah um so the idea is that instead of having put them in these guys, mm -hmm. this would mix it, and then with an auger, it has an auger on the bottom. It would push it out and to like making sausages um, into a plastic sheet, and then we can just clip it off, and then you just take that. Yeah, it's one-time use, cheap plastic, but I have to I have to put a con I have I have to put my own controllers on it because it needs to mix it, it needs to uh, push it out, it needs to cut it, basically it needs to have very precise control. Right now, all it does is you can spin forward, back, and turn the auger on. That's it. So I need to rip out all the electronics out and put my own in there. Nice. Yeah. And it's also, um, I bought this guy because it's just, um, it's very, it's made for food industry, so this all comes out and you clean it. Okay. And you can see that we're, we're tall enough that we can put ingredients in here, no problem. Yeah. And it's also tall enough that we can actually work with it. It's not this huge mixer that you have to have stairs to work yeah. So, nice. I like it, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Very cool. So this is one of my first machines that I bought. So it's a mill. So it's exactly the same thing as the CNC, but it's just all mechanical. So you can move it all around. You can see that. Yeah. A lot of stuff happens. Does this... So you have this set up. You have to manually move everything? Yes. Oh, okay. So you just manually move everything, and then you have a digital display. Oh, know. so where you need to... Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, th these are my rails. So you can see how far apart they are, what that is. So this is what I was seeing. There was a, a guy doing mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Trained one so of your guys. The only difference between that one and the CNC is that there's a motor on here, and then the controller is controlling where it's going, how fast it's going. Yeah. Like, turn it. Um, but if you need to drill something. So this is like a really rigid, so drill press usually can only take force down, this can take sideways. Okay. Or down, it doesn't matter. These are all, these are kind of like my organization. Okay. This is my drill bits, got my taps. Yeah. This is kind of like, I'm getting a lot more into electronics. So this is all my electronics, batteries, microcontrollers, um, just, yeah. Stuff like that. There's three D three D printers. There's three of them. One, two, three. And what do you do with this? So I made these guys. Like remember I was showing you earlier. Yes. With these, so these are three D printed. Nice. And you can see that I actually made ridges on the bot inside them, so they can actually walk up and down. Perfect. So these are three D printed. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was we got Sergi here with A N B's mm -hmm. out of Meridian. So uh, we'll drop all the information as far as his queens, his uh, I G, and uh, we'll drop that in the description box. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and give us a big thumbs up on this video. All right, guys. We're out. Thanks, guys. Bye.